All right. It's counting back. So that means you already turned the the thing on, right, over there? Okay. All right. So crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm Tim Seracki, and this is the Seracki <laughs> Show. My, uh, my daughter's name is Kat. Um, and we also bought my have a sister named Renee. I have a brother named uh, Christian. Uh, I'm Tim Seracki, and we got Greg Lamberson uh, somewhere, probably there. Yeah, okay, Greg Lamberson. And Mike Zagaria. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Zagaria. And uh, I'm sorry, I just met you, Mike. Oh, hold on, I got a text. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you have a flip phone. See, everybody makes no, I, I got a flip phone. I, I got a dumb phone. I, I, a dumb I, flip phone, yeah. My wife and I share one. Yeah. I don't even have my own. Hold on, I got to respond to this. It's going to take a while. It's a flip phone. Hold on. Hold on. We only got a half Greg hour here. <laughs> who, who is it? It's Terry Sullivan. Anyways, uh, Greg, that's a great uh, novella you just wrote. Did you just write that? Carnage Road? That one's two years old. It's great. Hold on. Let's get a shot of you. Oh, my God. It's great. Let's have a round of applause for you. You're the most cinematic author out there. Thank you. According to your, you got a lot of raves on there. Like, and and you, you got used like five, the Henry James quote. You used the Henry James. I love Henry James, by the way. I like to start each novel by. Henry James quote. That's so classy. Doing a Google search for an appropriate quote. It takes me half an hour, and then I put it up there, and it makes it look like I went to college <laughs> and know a lot about literature. You did go to college, and you do know a lot about well, literature. Wow. One year. It really impressed me because I'm a big Henry it's James fan. It's very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Mike, what about you, Henry James? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sorry. He's a writer. I'm, I'm out of the loop. You've heard there. of writing, yeah. right? I heard, yeah. But I write songs. So you're I don't a know. songwriter. You're not a book reader. I heard about writing. Saying? No, I, oh, no, back I, to don't, you. I don't know anything about it. You, you could, oh you could do the same thing I do. Yeah. If you did a Google search on Henry James, yeah. you'd see you who put it in. Put it on a CD cover. A book yeah. called <laughs> The Turning of the Screw. You could turn that into a song without even okay. reading the okay. book. Okay. All right. Anyway, so it's really good. I was. I like the fact that it's. Well, you're using Buffalo to start off in the in the novella, and it's the apocalypse. Now, is it post-apocalypse or apocalypse? It's the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, but I mean, it's actually like not post. It's actually it's, the apocalypse. Right. It's in the heart of the. And apocalypse. No, yeah, it's the heart of the apocalypse. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I said that the Paul isn't it appropriate that he's using Buffalo for the apocalypse to start? In, the story starts in the apocalypse well, in we, Buffalo. We often say this is a post-apocalyptic landscape. All the time. The Rust Belt is great. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Rust Belt is a total apocalypse. <laughs> this is an apocalyptic landscape or post-apocalyptic that we're living in. So. I'm not surprised you use that, although you do go around the country in the, the damn book. It was my first time oh. writing about Buffalo, though. That was good. I liked how you threw that in there. But you went on a cross country anyway. Yes. You went to Arizona. We lived in Arizona. Just like you guys. Yeah, we lived in Arizona. and uh, We didn't have any zombies <laughs> chasing us, though. Mike, Arizona? <laughs> I been there? Never playing. been there. No, that's another thing I have nothing about. You ever read Henry about, James? No. <laughs> Henry James. Yeah, yeah, Henry James. Yeah. You read him. Yeah. He's oh. from Arizona, right? He's from, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, Greg, that's good. I like the way you get all the raves at the beginning of it, saying how you're the greatest cinematic author around, and you're amazing, and you're a genius, and all Thank that you. stuff. And, Thank you. Well, my and, editor chose those. But those are real, though, right? They are genuine. Oh, my God. So why do we know such a special person? How do we get lucky knowing a special How person like him? you? If, if, well, it doesn't make sense <laughs> we would know you. I think it's because the 10 people who provided those blurbs are like the only 10 people who know who I am. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> that, makes, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You got any raves for your album, uh, Almost Worth the Wait? Mike? Uh, yeah, it's doing pretty good now. I got a nice uh, little following going on. Um, it's funny. It's called Almost it Worth the Wait because it took me three years to record that thing. Where the hell is it? Um, oh, where, here we go. Over here? If oh, uh, anyone there it knows is. about recording and there it writing. Is. Uh, that's, that's why it's Almost Worth the Wait. Yeah, I, had, I put an EP out in 2010, and then uh, I've been working on that for three years. I don't have a band. Me and my producer, we actually play all the instruments oh, on it. Of course you time. do. We kind of layered it and layered it. And <laughs> of course you layer it. Hold on a second. I'm going to put the camera on you. You layered it and layered it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like cake. Huh? Like no. a cake? Yeah. <laughs> Just like a cake? No? Okay. Back to you, Greg. Um, yeah, I think it's – and what's the – and so what's this uh, – there's a Slime City uh, sequel already, or I didn't know about that? You have a Slime no, City – the one I did a few years ago. So that's like the and Slime City Massacre, right? Right. And what's your new, newest uh, video and film project? You must be doing something besides the novella. And oh, the, sure. What have you well, been working on? You've been working on some big national stuff, right? The novella, first of all, has been optioned by Craig Sheffer. I know. Let's talk about the novella stuff. It's been optioned by Craig Sheffer. That's right. What do you think of that, Mike? Craig, Craig Sheffer, Sheffer fan? Yeah. Henry James. Yeah, Henry James. Craig, Craig Sheffer, Sheffer, right? Yeah. Arizona. <laughs> wow, who's he? <laughs> I'm probably supposed to know this, right? Well, he was he was a big star in the '80s. Oh, with a, big a lot star of the John 80s. Hughes movies and stuff. He was the he star was John of a Hughes movie wow. I worked on called Battle Dogs, which shot here in Buffalo a couple of years wow. ago, which had a big cast. And he's optioned the novella for he's going to make a movie of the the zombie. Uh, yeah. Wow. I thought it was good in the novella. You had uh, the quote from Henry James, of course, but then. You know, you had the quote from Elton John, and I said, you know, you've heard of Elton John, right, Mike? That, that's someone I do know. Oh, about. you know about Elton John. <laughs> yeah, he's having okay. a big research <laughs> right now. But you mentioned Elton John, I'm thinking, oh, and then you mentioned Paul Simon, and you mentioned, I'm thinking, 
What happened to Henry James? I was looking for more <laughs> great literature quotes during the book. There's a novella. He doesn't and, care about literature. Don't and all of a sudden, it was pop songsters. You. Come on, Greg. But, but like with the Jackson 5, I referenced the Jackson 5. And the Jackson 5! Cartoon. <laughs> oh, and that's... it was because they were going through Indiana. So oh, going that makes Indiana, sense. So. Right, because they were from Indiana. Really, yeah. the commentary there was just that all that pop culture is gone once the apocalypse hits. So there's a little warm, fuzzy feeling of nostalgia, and then, oh, there's no more of that. I like how you end the, the novella on, you know, we should have went to Canada. That was a good... <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Canada? You yeah, must have heard of that. Christ. Yeah, I heard of it, yeah. You've gone there. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Where yeah. You, wow, over the border? How far yes. did you go? It was dangerous. Uh, Montreal? <laughs> Montreal, yeah. I've been you went all the way to Montreal? I've been to Quebec. Quebec? Well, the yeah. whole, that's the, in, yeah. in Montreal's in Quebec. Is it? I don't fucking know. <laughs> you, mean Quebec, you mean Quebec City? Listen, I went on this tour. I followed Aerosmith for like a, like a year, and I just, that's where I ended up. You, you know, followed just, Aerosmith? Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my band. That's, oh, my I'm God. Sorry. Greg, did you quote Aerosmith in the novella? You quoted Elton John, who else? Billy Joel, do you quote him? I don't remember. Paul Simon. You definitely did. Definitely Elton John and definitely the Jackson Five and, of course, Henry James. So what's it's the, been the three years since I wrote it. So I, I don't yeah, it's a while ago. What's, really the, what's the option on it? What does that mean? He's going to make a movie out of it? Well, he, he, op uh, he worked on Battle Dogs. He gave him the book. He loved it. He came to Buffalo. He said, I want to option it. Um, he's pitching it as a TV show right now. Wow, a TV show. Will I you... wrote a pilot with him. Shit. Will you be the runner? No. Oh, but you, I would be a writer on it. However, that would be great. most likely it will be a movie, not a TV show. But still, you should be salivating then. I'm a very movie. I'm very excited. Let me tell you something. Christ. When Wait a minute. Movie, hold on a second. I've heard of Mike, movies. You heard of, okay, I've okay. heard of movies. Heard of movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. When the movie comes out, um, and I'm, I'm sure confident he'll make it because he's Wow, crazy. you're confident. I am. But that's like, there's he, only a 10% chance, right? He's raised a million dollars to produce and direct a movie before, so I know he can do it with us. Wow. But. Holy. When that movie comes out, there won't be one scene or one line of dialogue in it from my book. And you know what? No. I'm fine. We'll have the characters at all? And the characters still be there? <laughs> we'll have any of the same characters? The same two characters, yes. Well, okay. It'll be the same but, names? Yes. Wow. But not no dialogue. We'll we start in Buffalo and go to Los Angeles. So, Greg, God, Greg God. Is, that, is that new? Is that something that's, that's new for you now where you're not necessarily uh, hands-on with the script and you're saying, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. go, But it's go great. You don't yeah, care at I this like point. It. I like it. It's you got nothing left to lose, right? right? I, I try and get my ideas in, and when he says, ah, let's try this, I'm of like, course. fine. I tried. Right. Whatever. Let me make the sale. <sighs> Let me make some money once in my life. Yeah. It will only help sales in my books. That's right. So you're a media giant. <laughs> Have you heard of the media? No, I've heard of giants though. The giants, <laughs> they're real, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'd say this is the media, but of course, it's is it really the media? I don't think so. Back to you, Greg. Thank yeah, you. so that's, I mean, so you got a lot of stuff, and in, in, you got this. Okay, well, I asked you what's going on new, and you said you're, that's option, the novella, right? What else is going on? Didn't you work on some real national projects, some famous national projects? Well, that was Battle Dogs, the movie. Oh, Battle Dogs, was it? Okay, on. right. I haven't seen it, so that's a good movie. What's it, that about? Is that about the zombie it, apocalypse? No, no, it's a werewolf. Like, all, werewolf oh, it's action a werewolf. movie. That's so different. It premiered on the sci-fi. <laughs> it premiered on the sci-fi. Wow, channel. now was uh, that the sci-fi with the F-I or F-Y? F-Y. F-Y. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Craig Schaeffer, Wes Studi, uh, oh, Dennis Haysbert. It was oh, a big cast. Dennis Haysbert. Yeah. He was he was in those commercials. He still is in he's those He's still in those commercials. Have you seen the commercials? No, but I know Dennis Haysbert. Yeah, Mr. he's Mr. good. Mr. Haysbert's kid. And Todd Haynes. <laughs> Todd Haynes made a movie with Dennis Haysbert. And Todd Haynes is the man who, who's changed my whole life. So there you go. Todd Haynes is amazing. Todd Haynes is amazing, exactly. <laughs> so you won't feel like, hey, I, I directed all these movies. They were wonderful, and now I'm not going to be directing the TV show. I'm not even gonna, or the movie. I'm not even going to. I'll just be a writer. You don't care. That's fine. You don't mind. You don't feel like if it I, becomes a TV show and I can make a real income on yeah. my writing, I'm happy. Whatever. Yeah, that would be good. From and Buffalo, I, right? You can the, actually write here. You don't have to leave to do the writing. Right? This is true. And you know, Stephen King has said it. No one ruins my books. They're right there on the shelf. Wow. Ooh. You like the TV show? Found Buy my books. Buy yeah, Stephen my King, book. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Stephen King. I'm a, I'm a Dean Koontz fan. <laughs> Dean actually, Koontz. Yeah, I've read wow. every Dean Koontz book. You like? Do you know who that is? He's got K O O N T Z. Yeah. Yeah, I, I okay. work at the library, so I know they that. They made yeah. three different movies based on Watchers. None of them were like the book. I, he got paid for each version. Damn right. Sure Dean was exciting. happy. He was yeah. kuntzing it up. That's right. He was kuntzing all the way to the yeah. bank. You know what I'm saying? Dean Koontz movies are, are no good. No, books are excellent. What about, did you put? Did you do any uh, soundtrack work? No. No soundtrack no. work yet? You never no, hit, you just, yet. never I'm, had your song on a... No. 
But you'll be Greg. You'll be using his work in a movie or movie or TV show, probably. Right? I love after you, after you listen to this, I, I'll after you CD, listen to this, after musician. you listen to this CD, you'll probably say, "Hey." And then when you bring, unfortunately, when you bring it up to the people, the big people, they're gonna say, "I don't think so." Right? That's yeah. the only problem. You'll you'll be you'll be it going is, for Mike, say, and I I'm not worried quality. about it's the not, big people judging my little movies. They don't. No, I'm saying if you, if you back up Mike and say put the t- oh, music in the right. TV show or movie, unfortunately, Mike, I got to tell you, what? these people are tough. They might say, They're listen, tough, yeah. you're the writer, you're one of the writers, Greg, shut up. <laughs> That's Just, right. You're one of the writers, you're the anyway. creator. But won't it say created yeah, by you? CD anyway. Yeah. Oh, so it's still saying like, create. Thank you. Oh, you got the created <laughs> by. Uh, like good move. <laughs> Are you sure you're, getting, you're sure you're getting that? I have another. Yeah, it's in the contract. Oh, wow. Created My, by. Uh, pass up an opportunity <laughs> like that. Yeah. An old friend of mine who's out in L.A. and he was a development exec for many years is uh, pitching my Jake Hellman thing as a TV show as well. I've already been told that in that case, uh, I could be an executive producer on the show, but I won't be allowed to do any of the writing because that would have to be. WGA, executive producer? WGA members, and the yeah, last thing they want is the Writers writer Guild of America. in that room. And again, you know, all right. Of course. Executive Roll producer is dice. good. Writers Guild of America. Are you cash. in that, Mike? Jeez, Are you in the Songwriters Guild of America? No. That's right. I'm the SWGA? Star, I'm a, and capitalized. Guild, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Are you we're ASCAP? Getting, no. BMI? We're, we're getting beyond no, that no, point. No, I should be. I really should be. <laughs> I've got a... Uh, <laughs> I've got to write those. Oh. <laughs> we're having a little extra conversation here. Back to Greg. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> having a conversation with Paul. I have to thank Paula for... Uh, let's get me on the camera for once. Thanks to Paula for getting me here. Tim Siraki, uh, uh Tim Siraki. I'm Tim Siraki, and my, my daughter's name is Kat, and my wife's name is Paula. And I want to thank Paula for driving me here in an icy blizzard. I don't remember Kat. I'd like to thank you for coming here. Yeah, you gave birth to her. Remember that? No. Yeah. No, hold on a second. Remember that? Yeah, okay. No, I don't remember. And Greg, you, you came here during the icy blizzard. Thank you. Anytime. And Mike, thanks for toughing it out. I know you were going to yeah. stay home with your cold, but you came yeah. anyways. Yeah, tough. There, you guys are troopers. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, that's beautiful. Can I say that I'm excited that you guys are back on the air? That's so nice of you. Thanks. thanks. And uh, I also want to congratulate you and Paula on your ceremony. My nup- our nuptials. I apologize for I not like being the- able to attend the that's okay. graveyard <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> I was really You're looking forward to okay. it. Yeah, thanks. Why weren't you yeah, there? That's, Something that's, with my daughter. That's Something. Up, that's right up your alley, that graveyard marriage. Yeah, we were. We you. got Mike, Paul, and I got married in the graveyard, and this guy's <laughs> Mr. Zombie. He doesn't I, show up for the wedding. No. What? You think he would have been like? Well, that's the greatest thing I ever heard of. You're getting married in the cemetery. But I generally hate the cliches of weddings and all the traditions. It wasn't a cliche. Oh, was, I know. Was that, yeah, I was genuinely excited. <laughs> Get I thought, this. That sounds great. Even better. Now, have you ever heard of Scarface, the movie with Al Pacino, yeah, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Now, get this. It's unbelievable. Hold on. I'm going to put this camera on me. Get this. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Not only do we have a graveyard wedding, which is cool. You know, it's not a cliche. Most people don't do the graveyard wedding, right? Because no. they don't want to be in a cemetery with death around them when they're talking about, you know, till death do us part. Even though that's right there, till death do us part. <laughs> and so, get this. Paula says, if you want to wear your Scarface Al Pacino shirt as your wedding outfit. Go ahead. That's how loose she is. Oh, she left me for cool. the wedding. Wear my Scarface <laughs> Al Pacino shirt. That's what I wore it to the wedding. Really good is that you. Unbel- I, looks, I know, but here, how many da- Plus you Greg, died- how many wives, even if they go for the cemetery idea, would let you wear the Scarface Al Pacino shirt for your wedding so outfit? The, Come on, right, the Greg? The cemetery was my idea. No, right, but I'm saying besides that, the, the Al Pacino was your idea. And Paula, you're, you're crazy. A- and he dyed his hair red. <laughs> I dyed my hair red because she has the- dyed red hair. So for the did, wedding, it was yeah. great. It was like bright red. What about you, Mike? Sort of you ever dyed your hair? No. It is now. I'm, I'm a blonde, actually. I oh, you are blonde, I so you did dye it. Okay, for the yeah. Show. For the show tonight. <laughs> so, Greg, isn't that cool? The Al Pacino Scarface shirt? How many, how, many, cool. how many damn husbands do you think had a real marriage ceremony where their wife let them wear an Al Pacino Scarface shirt? How many ever? I'm going to guess one. Damn right! It's one! <laughs> Has that been researched, though? Tomorrow, would she, let you wear, <laughs> tomorrow would she have let you wear a, a Scarface shirt? Not for the wedding. No, that's but what we I'm saying. A casual wedding, But too. still, if you said it tomorrow, hey, I'm going to wear Al Pacino's Scarface shirt for the wedding, would she have said yes? Come on, no way! She just said why. If she would have said, what the hell, are you, <laughs> have you really lost it? Uh, okay. Hey, Mike, why don't we do the song? Yeah, That'd be cool. good. Let's do the song now. So this yeah. is the album. Which is, uh, hold on a second. Let's look at this one more fucking time if I can get the thing. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. There you go. Almost worth the wait. Almost it's, worth it's quality, the wait. So it's, it's, not, it's not a crappy Zagaria, garage what, oh, what happened? recording. How come you didn't bring your brother for the Zagaria brothers? What happened uh, to that? That hasn't started yet. April 26th, our first uh, gig. Oh, you but never have, played with your a, brother before No, now? not yet. No, no. Holy shit. No, it's going to, yeah. April 26th, uh, where? Not that it matters. It well, matter. my next gig is um, April 19th at Forest View. I'm playing oh. solo. Oh, that's also a And April 26th is... Where's Forest View? 
It's uh, right on the corner of uh, French Forest and Transit Pew. and Depew, or is that Lancaster? It's on the corner of Forest. It's yeah. like a, it's a restaurant, but there's a bar connected to it right in the. Front. So you haven't been doing the Zagaria Brothers with your brother all these years. This is a new no, thing. No, no, no. I was oh. uh, just me and uh, my producer Mike Veal have been playing together for the last three and a half years. So you brought your brother in like yeah. it's like he's the Garfunkel. He's yeah. I think yeah. yeah. So. We should the call Garf- ourselves Garfunkel. He's and the Oates. Garfunkel. That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. They're really sick though. Those Garfunkel and Oates thing. I saw their video and I. Oh, there is a Garfunkel and Oates. Yeah. Oh shit. Garfunkel and Oates. Funny. Have you seen their video, Greg? No. Garfunkel and Oates. No. It is sick. I want to. I'm just gonna keep it clean here for you folks because this is <laughs> we're you know a clean television show. It's about kids in high school and they want to keep it, you know, safe and they want to keep it pure, so they go the other way. The men and the women together. They don't go the regular way. They don't go the classic way. They don't go the missionary style way. You know what I'm saying? That's the video. Garfunkel knows. That's sick. There's a video of it? Yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. Check that out. <laughs> all right, so what's the song called? When Goodnight Meets Goodbye. Yeah. Now, you wrote you wrote this one, right? Yeah, I wrote when all the tunes on there. Yeah, you wrote um, all of them. Someone to sing to. Yeah, that's, uh, I actually have, have a brand new uh, music video out now for someone to sing to. We filmed it at Holidays. Had all our friends come down, packed the place. Wow. And, uh, played the song five times. And, uh, that's great. In fact, um, you, you had someone style. on here. That I, won, I won this uh, video contest. It was between me and Rachel Palumbo. Oh, I've heard of her. Oh. And, um, she does good work, yeah. I know she's been on the show. That's why I mentioned it. She was it. on, yeah. But they liked both of us so much, they made a video for both of us. So, oh, you know, it's so kind of cool. Beautiful. You know, got, you know, narrowed so down beautiful. to two of us, and we both, you know. <laughs> I haven't met her yet, though, but I saw her video. You haven't met cool. Rachel Palumbo? No, it's pretty cool, though. Greg, do you like music? Sometimes. Are you ready to judge this like American Idol? You, you, let's not do that. You, I do like accus- <laughs> acoustic music. Hold on. Music. Wait, wait. Mike is saying no. Let's not, let's not do that. <laughs> you don't want to be judged. Well, here's what, I'm, well, I'm not better than Chris Squire. He's, he's you don't want to be judged? No, no. What Who kind of person be, are you? Who wants to be judged? Well, why are you putting the CD out if you don't want to be judged? <laughs> I'm very judgmental anyway, so. So when this song is over, Greg won't say anything. kicks ass with a band. The song kicks ass. Oh, it kicks ass with a band. Yeah, can I get a band in here? Like, good night means goodbye. Okay, let's see. And and it's, what is this about? Uh, actually, it's kind of funny. Um, when uh, my wife was pregnant, I watched a lot of like soap operas with her, just because that's what she was doing. And she was watching General Hospital like every day. Yeah. And it's kind of funny when like the character says like "I love you," it sounds like they're really saying "I'm sorry." When they say "Good night," they're really saying "Goodbye." So oh, I yeah. had this idea: when "Good night" means "Goodbye" and "I love you" means "I'm sorry," right. you know. And I got that idea. And the rest of the song's not about soap no. opera, but that's how it started. And that makes a lot of sense. You know, you stole from everyday you life know? of the yeah. the, mon- the mundane. Soap yeah. operas. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Well, the clouds look down on me And they say, let's rain on this one So I turn my face to block the wind Just to get burned by the sun I never meant to hurt you. Life just threw us a curve. I'm a long, long way from home. But it still kind of feels like home. And you know I love to be all by myself. But I hate to be alone. It's when someone leaves your life that you remember everything they said. When goodnight means goodbye and I love you means I'm sorry. When I look in your eyes, everything feels right. I was wrong, you were right. This ain't where we're supposed to be. And I know I'll never hold you again, but my heart will never let this end. Love looks good on you But you ain't look too good in a while Things happen on the way to the future Things happen to me when you smile Now you're happy and I am too but I'll never stop loving you when goodnight means goodbye and I love you means I'm sorry. When I look in your eyes, everything feels right. I was wrong, you were right. This ain't where we're supposed to be. 
friends, I know I'll never hold you again, but my heart will never let this end. Wow, that, that was, was really good. That was a short a, radio edit for you. <laughs> you've got a really wow. nice voice. I really oh, thank like you. That's really with the cold, like too. <laughs> really good. But yeah, yeah, check yeah. out the album <laughs> version of that. It kicks ass. It's, wow. It's, nice it's, hat. Yeah. So the album has, uh, <laughs> album has, <laughs> has, has full, I actually got full um, orchestration, right? Solo. If you're a, a <laughs> blues fan in Buffalo and you don't make Hayes, he plays on one of my tunes, the song Gray. You don't make Hayes? No, I don't think so. He's incredible. He helped out there. And I that got Mike Vealy as my producer. It's just mostly just me and Mike Vealy playing everything on the album. Right, including our drums? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. it's a full band album. Yeah. I thought it was really and great. It's, I and mean, it's professionally done. It doesn't sound like a crappy like, garage recording. It's, oh, it's radio good. ready. It's, that's great. Yeah. I thought it was, you were really good. Good singing. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. The thing about, you know, love looks good on you and you haven't looked good in a while. <laughs> that was really good. But the thing is, I, I, we can't really comment right now because we, we don't wanna, you don't want any judging, right? Well, I, I want good. I want to hear good things. If you, so you, know, know, you, know, you know, you could. Greg, any positive ready. comments? I am ready. You could. Um, Getting positive. I enjoyed it very I much. I love that not only did he do the vocals and play the guitar himself, but he tapped his foot hard enough that it simulated like subwoofers <laughs> vibrating in a nightclub. I got the whole experience. <laughs> Who needs a band? Oh, all right, that's right. That's good. <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, let me go to me. I thought that was excellent. And and, and speaking as Harry Connick Jr. with all the talent I have from New Orleans. And Keith Urban, all the talent I have from Australia. I'd say it was very good. I think you're right up there. You know, you're definitely at the Chris Squire level, of course. You said that you were being self-deprecated. Right, right under Chris? No, you're at the same level. Chris, definitely, Chris at Chris, least. I will say you might Chris be better than Chris. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm no, going no, on a record. You're <laughs> better than Chris no, Squire. No, no, no. You're better. I'm no. sorry, Chris, but Mike is better. No. I'm sorry. I have to break it to you, Chris. But, yeah, that was fantastic. Wow. No. All right. We're going to use this uh, CD on the show when we play it. We, 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 we plan to... Uh, Every week too. We haven't. Been, we didn't do it tonight because I was like, "Let's get going." But uh, we have, you know, have an intro and outro, and then when the show gets uh, when it drags, put some mic up. You know, we'll put you up in, cool. in the middle of the show too. Cool. All right. So, uh, Greg, you've had a full career. You know, I want to mention. Uh, I got. I still think about Undying Love. Your movie Undying Love a lot because that's a, really that. Yeah, that he made this movie about this this guy who's really depressed. You know, and he wants to die, and then he becomes a vampire. It's really. That is a damn, oh, my God. Have you heard of that? Undying Love. He's suicidal. Oh, suicidal. And That's what I said, yeah. chick who's a vampire, yeah. so then he's cursed <laughs> with living forever. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> it's so gothy. Yeah, that's a really good movie. Ahead of its I, time. No, I know. It's a really, oh, my God. <laughs> that's something. Yeah, he's, so he's like, um, so you got, uh, you got the one thing optioned, and you got uh, the other thing, you know, and then you, get, you got so many things in the fire. So you got like three or four things in the fire. I got so many more than that. Well, tell me about everything right. that's on the fire right. right now. I just shot fire. a short film called Gave Up the Ghost, which right. is a comedy from a short story by a friend of mine named Jeff Strand, who's a successful horror author, and that'll be part of an anthology. Oh so my it'll God. play in film festivals by itself and then be assembled for DVD with three other films. Jesus. Um... A film I produced called The Legend of Six Fingers, which yeah. is a found footage Bigfoot movie, will be out in June. Yeah. A movie I directed, which Dave McCreary did music for. Do you, I oh, think yeah, you know Dave McCreary Dave? did yeah. music for our, my movie Sweet Jesus. He did my soundtrack. He did a great job. He's great. He had this great band called Crawl Space in the old days. Crawl Space and Paper Faces, but Crawl Space I really loved. Under uh, on my film. Oh, he played at my wedding. He played at my wedding. Seal Cats. I, that's, that's how I knew Yeah, him. Dave played at my wedding, yeah. So he did the music for Dry Bones, which will be out in September. Oh, my God. And then, Avalanche. This guy's like a... Giant. In June, this is the one I'm excited <laughs> yeah. about telling you about. Yeah, forget the other ones. In June. In yeah. June, I have a novel coming out called The Julian Year, which is the first tree book. Tree book stands for Timed Reading Experience ebook. Now, wow. the way the tree book works is you will go to iTunes yeah. and download the Medallion Media Group Sidekick app for free. Holy shit. You will uh, purchase the Julian Year through this app. Yes. And you will read the book using this app. And right. what it does is it measures each reader's individual average reading pace. So when you come up to a point in the story where there's a predetermined branch point, if your reading pace speeds up or slows down, the book is going to change direction. Different events will Wow. Uh, no wonder you're excited about this. Will live or die oh based my on God. your reading habits. I love it. There are multiple variations, multiple <laughs> endings. It's insane. And it is. Unlike to choose your own adventures, the reader's not aware it's happened because it's seamless branching. The page numbers, everything. You don't know what's happened until you reach the end of the book. Then a graph will appear showing you what paths, what branches of the tree you've taken. And at that point, 
you're free to skip around for all the what if scenarios or start over from the beginning. And at that point, your reading habits are going to be different each time you read it. So you should get a different experience each time. Oh, my God. No wonder you're excited about that. <laughs> I love the way you're using your writing with the technology. That's incredible. Um, is that mind-blowing, Mike? The publisher that? came up. Mind-blowing. Yeah, it is. Is this, is this brand new? Are you, like, one of the first I'm, people to do this? Mine, trying is, it out mine is the first book. The publisher developed the technology. Wow. Jesus. Wow. They've done most of my books. They, they told me at the premiere of Slime City Massacre four years ago, the president yeah. of the company came up for the premiere because they put money into the film. Right. They said, listen. I want to let you know we're phasing out all of our mass market paperbacks. Right. I had one mass market paperback before we went to the large yeah. trade paper. But we're going to create this crazy thing. And I had to sign non-disclosure agreements. Or it took me a year to write. It's a really crazy project. Wow. And uh, it's been done for about a year, but they had to work out all the bugs. And they did work out all the bugs. And then... Uh, iTunes released a new iOS system, and yeah. it screwed everything up, oh. so they had to postpone it. So in June, it's finally coming out, and the great thing about this, wow. the, the way publishing works, and I'm lucky to have a publisher, yeah, you get a little bit of promotion in the month leading up to the book, you get promotion during the month the book comes out, and then you're lucky to get some promotion afterwards. So you get three months to get it out there and make people aware of it. Right. They have spent so much time and so much money developing this technology. They have a lot riding on it that I'm probably going to get six months to a year of promotion on it. So it's, it's as far as my writing goes, it's probably the biggest thing I've been involved with. It's got to be because it's, it's be. so it's so modern in 21st century yeah. to the max. And what's that going to be the title of that one, the novel? The Julian Year. All oh, right, you said the Julian Year, right? And now, what does that refer to, though, the Julian Year? The concept of the novel is that uh, every day of the year, every Everyone born on that day of the year, everyone yeah. who has a birthday, gets possessed by something demonic. Well, that, so yeah, by the end of 365 true. days, everyone should be possessed. So it's a countdown book. Wow. So it's January 1st to December 31st? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't believe you have too much stuff. I mean, because usually I have, I have guests on, and I say, um, this is what I say, like Rachel Plum was on, Mike, you'll, you'll appreciate this. I say, well, Rachel, it's great having you on. Uh, what do you, what gig, when do you got some gigs coming up? I don't, I don't have any gigs coming up. I don't have a band. You know, that kind of stuff. That's like every time like I ask someone, except for you two guys, he's got the gigs and his brother yeah, yeah, and the CD yeah. and everything, and then you have like 10 yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, my God. And they're not just – I'm impressed, Greg. They're not just uh, 10 things, but there's 10 special things. I mean, not 10, but, you know, there's a lot of special things. The option. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, Christ, and then the, and then the, the, the crazy 21st century for the Julian year. Yep. That's pretty impressive. And what's the third thing? Is there a TV show or something? Or you're into, oh, you're an executive well, producer on something, the, too. The Jake Hellman Files. Oh, if, my if it happens, God. I know. A possible executive a, producer. Everything's a, everything's a crap shoot. The option thing and on, on, on uh, Carnage Road and then this. And that's, oh, my God. That's at least three major things. Yeah. And you've already done a lot of stuff. I like to keep making my own things, though, so if these possible things don't happen, yeah. I'm not sitting. You're still doing so I'm stuff for yourself. An, I'm yeah. shooting a new movie in June. Of course you are. It's the first thing you're, I'm directing. You're directing that, yeah. That I that I didn't write myself. A friend of mine named Paul McGinnis wrote it. It's a comedy called Killer Rack, and it's about a. What was a, the second word? Killer Rack. Rack. So rack. this is like a breast thing. Uh, Killer flat Rack. chested woman decides to improve her life by getting breast implants. It does improve your life, ladies. Let me tell you, <laughs> when you get the breast implants, it improves your life. And it turns out that the breast plants are Lovecraftian creatures that want of to take over they the are. world. Of so course they they're are. They're man-eating boobs. It's hilarious. It's it's the funniest script. Man-eating boobs. Read, yeah. Okay, let me ask Mike here. I've, I've heard, heard of man those. Eating boobs? Yes. But man-eating yeah. boobs. I've seen you heard them of those? before. Yeah. You've heard of the man-eating ones. <laughs> yeah. You got any thoughts about man-eating boobs? No, let's work on one, though. I mean, it seems we... like that would <laughs> make sense, itself, the man-eating right? boobs. I can see that in your next album, man-eating boobs. I might work on that soundtrack, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> that's right. Hey, wait a minute. And you can, and you're, that's your movie. That's true. So you can I, bring I, Mike I, in on this, I right? If right. you come up with a man-eating man -eating boobs, boobs song, <laughs> <laughs> just work on man-eating boobs, and then you've got the perfect person to go to. He's a director. <laughs> that's appearing in my Kickstarter campaign. But still, I mean, he might be able to do the man-eating boobs for your Kickstarter <laughs> campaign, huh? I'm not kidding, Mike. Thank about this this could be a magic you know yeah. this could be like a love connection jesus a, that's amazing it is a You're doing too much stuff. commercial idea oh it's great it's super commercial now what it's super commercial <laughs> now your friend wrote it and he said i have a super commercial idea you want to direct it is that how it happened no he entered it in the buffalo screams horror film festival without telling which you i run yeah what you and run? i had a guest uh judge uh, critique the screenplays, yeah. and he chose him as the winner. And it wasn't until like eight months later on the set of uh, Dry Bones, the movie coming out in September, that uh, he brought it up again. And I said, okay, let me read it. And I read it, and I couldn't stop laughing. Wow. And I, I took him out, and I said, I have to direct this, unaware that another friend of ours 
was going to direct it. So I kind of pulled the rug out from the other friend. It's so he, important. As long as you're doing it, that's all I care <laughs> that's about. Right. Friend. I don't want really to give a damn about the dog. Dog <laughs> eat dog. But the other it friend is, is going to be a, a dog. Co producer on the film. So. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank God he didn't get pushed out completely. No, nah, nah, I couldn't do that. All right. Well, it was uh, okay. Mike, there you are. And then Greg, there you are. And here's another Greg. I'm Greg Siraki. I thought you were Tim. <laughs> I'm Greg Siraki. This is Siraki. You've been watching Siraki. Uh, almost worth the wait. And uh, of course, Greg has 20.